email sent with a mind control keyboard which just sends right now via brainstorm. This is a printed version of the first recorded email sent by a mind-controlled keyboard. The first email, the first email ever, was sent by ARPANET, a thousand pound computer, and a keyboard. Since then, everything has changed. Million dollar mainframes have become iPhones, the ARPANET has become the internet, but keyboards have stayed keyboards. Even the most advanced keyboards, like touchscreens, are still equivalent to punching a bunch of different buttons. As a non-invasive, mind-controlled keyboard, Brainstorm does things differently. Instead of keys, it has electrodes, and instead of punching a bunch of different buttons, it has thinking. When combined into one system, Brainstorm transforms brainwaves into language. This email right here is only one word, and it took hundreds of hours and thousands of lines of code, but it represents a significant step in the long journey to typing with our minds. Before I get into a high level overview of how Brainstorm does this, let's review what Brainstorm has done and will continue to do for users and researchers. And Brainstorm does and has done all of this with fewer data points, less chain time, and less computation than existing mind-controlled keyboards. And for those concerned about their wallets, Brainstorm is thousands of dollars cheaper than existing invasive solutions. But how? How does Brainstorm work? Brainstorm uses the Emotive Epoch X, a wireless EEG that has 14 electrodes. Each electrode records local brain activity at 128 hertz. The first step to processing the signal is peak detection. Brainstorm does this with a robust peak detection algorithm. This algorithm uses sliding windows that capture the signal's moving average and standard deviation. The most recent data point z-score is then calculated using these values, and if the score exceeds 3.5, the point is classified as a peak, and new values, the new standard deviation and new moving average, are calculated using a dampened version of the point. If enough electrodes peak at the same time, Brainstorm indicates that the user has blinked. Developers can add their own events to this artifact detection algorithm, but Brainstorm uses five blinks in a given time bin to trigger Control z which undoes the last typing event. For typing, Brainstorm relies on the SSVEP paradigm, which basically states that a flashing object will induce a similar frequency in the brain. By using the SSVEP paradigm, Brainstorm transforms an infinitely complex translation problem where each brainwave and each word must match, right? There must be a pattern that links every single word to every single brainwave, which is very difficult, into a simple classification problem where information, language in this case, can be encoded in flashing boxes. Brainstorm uses three flashing boxes, but the software allows developers to specify N boxes. Each box contains letters or phrases flashing at a specific frequency. These frequencies are then classified using logistic regression, which is trained on frequency bands extracted from these electrodes. When it comes time to select a box, Brainstorm requires the winning candidate, right, the frequency that has been selected, to obtain a majority of votes. This reduces the amount of false positives, which in turn increases typing speed. After a letter or phrase has been selected, Brainstorm sends an asynchronous query to Google for autocomplete suggestions that the user can then select from. By outsourcing natural language processing, Brainstorm ensures that autocomplete suggestions are both high quality and user specific. And finally, when the user is done typing, the text can be sent to anyone, anywhere via email. The entire process is conducted via a Windows Form application that can be downloaded and run on any personal computer. You can find the download, the data, and the code at the site on screen. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Jet Hayes, and I created Brainstorm.